We're going to take a look at a classic time stretching effect now and this is working really well on vocals. It first arrived many many years ago when people abused the parameters of the Akai S1000 to create a really dark and twisted vocal effect. One of the earliest examples is Dead Dread. What, what the name? Dead Dread. Later on, it was used on some house tunes as well. Armin van Helden brought the style back for quite a few of his remixes. So let's take a look at how we can do this in Cubase. I've got a vocal here and you can download this for yourselves as well to actually work on the technique. Just going to drag this into the project window and copy it through. Now this is a short vocal and it's just saying the word function. I'm going to play this for you. Function. There's a lot of dead silence before and after the sound and I deliberately chose this vocal with that silence because I want to basically show you that you need to get rid of it. Otherwise you're going to be stretching the dead air. Now that could be something that you want to use if you want to make an ambient track but if you want something to be really lively and in your face like the two track examples we just listened to then that you want to actually make sure that you haven't got too much of that silence either side of the vocal. So just going to zoom in on the front part just going to bring that slightly more over to the right. So the vocal. Function. A little bit of the reverb afterwards. So that's perfect. Now we're going to have to manually set some parameters on the time stretch. So what we're going to do is going to right click, come down to process and time stretch. And what we want is this one that I've got highlighted here. There are plenty of different algorithms and each is suited to a particular type of program material. So we're talking about the source audio. Now, because we want to play around with this, we want to use a custom. So we want to get actually access to these parameters. And the standard algorithm is the original one from Cubase. So it's the oldest. Some would say it's the roughest. You don't need to have the best time stretch algorithm to work on this kind of stuff. Now the settings, the grain size, that's like the width of the grains. So the higher that is, the more stuttered it is, the lower it is, the more kind of buzzier sort of the texture is going to be. Overlap is related to the crossfading and Variance works with the crossfading to try to help you achieve a more natural result. Now we don't want a natural result in this example. I'm going to take the overlap right down. So I'm just going to pick this up and take it to the left. The variance is at 0%. That's good. The grain size looks about right. I'm going to experiment with some of these. I'm going to take it possibly to about 3000 firstly. Thinking about it, that might be a better value. So I'm going to put it there. Click OK. And the great thing about this is we can preview. So the amount here, the stretch ratio, let's take it long and let's have a listen. Um. Now that sounds really good. I'm going to process that and we can have a look. Now visibly you can see these kind of stuttered sections of the waveform now that have been created by the time stretch process. So that's sounding really good. And in the examples you heard before, there was a little bit of affecting going on. What I'm going to do quickly is just going to drop down a delay. So we'll use the ping pong delay. I'm going to change the delay time to every beat. Feedback, just down a little bit, mix a little bit here. Going to roll off the low end on the delay signal. So let's have a listen to that. Yeah, that's working really, really nicely there. But I'm going to undo. I just want to show you some of the other possibilities. Let's bypass the effect. Let's right click, come down to process, time stretch. And let's have a look at these custom parameters again. I'm going to take the grain size smaller so you can really hear how much of a difference that's going to make. Um. It is in fact an interesting texture. It's not the same as the examples we heard earlier, but it's still valid. It would still be worth trying. Let's have a look at some other parameters. What if we increased the overlap? So we're talking about adding this crossfade. Let's take it to 50%. So we are adding the fade at the beginning, the end of the grain. So you can hear it's a lot smoother. And uh, because we've gone for quite a long length, that's really stretching out. If I take this to a shorter ratio, um. 
it's not such a pronounced effect. You know, it's always going to be the case of time stretching. The bigger the ratio, the more obvious the actual end result is going to be. Let's just take this back up and let's get in there and adjust the variance parameter. So let's take this to about 50%. Let's have a listen. You're going to start to hear this kind of warbly sort of texture coming through. Um. Almost sounds like some bad radio tuning going on there. I'll really exaggerate that by taking it to a larger value over here. And let's have a look at that one. Um. So you've got different choices. You know, I would say that the uh, the first method I showed you is the more accurate for getting that old school sort of jungle kind of flavor. So experiment and see which one is going to work best for you.